Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station, which is coming soon. So stay tuned as we analyze this beta machine and see the good, the bad, and what can be improved to make it even better. Alrighty, this is a beta machine from Anycubic. This is their Wash and Cure Station, which is designed to be paired with their any cubic photon printer. This will of course work with any resin printer. It's also one of the cheapest available. From what I understand, it's going to be available for between like 250 and 350. I don't know the actual final price yet, but the next nearest competitor is almost $900 for the exact same type of machine. So, not bad. So, let's go over what it is and what it does. When you print with resin, you are printing with a liquid. Do absolutely make sure that in all cases you use your PPE when dealing with resin, it is toxic in some way. We don't know the full extent of how toxic it is, it hasn't been analyzed enough yet, but we know at the minimum it is sensitizing. If you know what that means, if you've dealt, um, if you know people who've dealt with epoxies and heavy solvents, your body can eventually become sensitized to those harsh chemicals to the point where you can no longer be around them because you will break out and have issues if you are even near them. That can happen with resin and it could be worse, we don't know. So wear your PPE, please. Now, once a resin part is washed and cured, it is perfectly safe. It is just a plastic. It is only when it's in its liquid state, when you have those UV photopolymers, that you have to worry about this. So never ever touch the resin. I would also, um, I would advise not having children and pets around resin printing. I would even go so far as to get something like a enclosure, which I'm going to be using for my resin printers because not only can I put the enclosure over top of these printers, for example, I could put um, two or three printers plus a curing station all inside that enclosure, and I can also vent that enclosure outdoors, so I won't even have any smell, because for some people, the smell of this resin can be quite strong. Hi, kitty. <laughs> Ender's coming to inspect. Yeah. So, how does this work? Well, first you have a cover. This cover is to protect you from the UV light. There is actually a sensor on the back of the vertical tower, that part right there, that detects whether this cover is in place or not. If it's not in place, the machine will not function, which is a good safety feature. You get a bucket. This bucket contains your IPA and also has a magnetic spinner. So the motor inside of here has two magnets on it. Those magnets lock onto these two magnets, and when that motor spins, that motor, that blade spins and washes your parts and it's very aggressive it actually creates a whirlpool um, the parts in one cycle they cleaned extremely effectively I was very impressed by that so the bucket is sealable you can of course open the bucket and now your IPA solution is ready it locks into here great the CNC is fine there's plenty of tolerance there and you'll actually see the magnetic motor lock into place as it sinks up with the magnet inside the base there are three ways you can insert your parts for larger parts that fit within this basket. You simply put your parts in here, wearing your gloves of course. Drop this into your IPA bath and there is a set of um, bent channels on the back here that the basket hangs from. Now the basket sits inside of here as far down as you can without actually touching the magnetic spinner. That's important because otherwise that won't turn. Um, you let it run its process. Obviously you need to make sure you have enough IPA in here to completely cover your parts. Beyond that, I would like a, a suggestion for Anycubic. It would be nice, and I think you can do it with existing hardware. Okay. We need a way to hang the basket while still keeping it over top of this so that it can drip dry without getting alcohol all over the place, especially resin contaminated alcohol. So I think you can reuse these existing brackets. And the machine comes with two extra brackets. This one is for a full build height, and this one is for a half or shorter build height. What do you mean by that? Well, you can actually take the build plate, any build plate from any printer, by the way, but you could take the build plate off your printer and actually mount your build plate onto this. You just slide that underneath the tightening knob, tighten the knob down, and now your build plate's attached to this. This fits into here, and that is the exact height that you need to submerge a part inside of this that is the full 150 millimeter build height of the printer. So if you print a very large Eiffel Tower, you can leave it attached to the build plate, install the entire build plate onto this bracket, and insert this into here and submerge it into the alcohol. For 
You don't want to use this for everything, of course, because then, you know, you have to keep this filled with the 3.5 liters worth of alcohol, and this stuff is $10 a liter. <laughs> so it's a little expensive. So for smaller batches, you have this one. Now, I did have to adjust this a little bit. I just bent it with my hands. I just bent it out just a tiny bit because there's a little play in this bracket. And what happens is it tends to tilt toward the back side of the bucket with the build plate, the heavy build plate attached. And bending it out just slightly gives me the, um, so that when it does its little uh, down, it's actually sitting level. Okay, So your build plate attaches to here. You adjust the height, whatever height you need. So mine were short, so it was almost all the way down. And now when you insert this, your build plate hangs lower inside your bath. So you don't have to fill it with as much alcohol in order to use it effectively. So that's a very nice addition. So what does this have to do with the basket? Well, I'd like to see a way to hang the basket while keeping just the bottom edge inside of this so that it can drip dry. Um, if you make a small modification to this Anycubic, I believe you can reuse this for that purpose. First, you would need a either to modify this to accept the basket. You could do that by having a bit more metal here with two lips that won't interfere with attaching the build plate, but will allow you to hang this from it. So uh, I believe even just having a little U-hole here, a little two little U-holes like that, so that the basket can actually engage and hang into that. And if you were to make this bracket a little thicker, I mean, you might not even need to make it thicker. I think it's plenty strong enough, but remove this tab in the center here. See how you have the two slots? These parts actually engage the outer wings. So they engage these outer plates. They don't need to engage the center tab. So assuming your internal testing shows that this is strong enough, make it thicker if it's not, remove this center tab. That's all you gotta do, just cut that center tab out and then you'll be able to install this upside down. And if you can install this upside down like this, you now have a ready-made way of hanging your basket like this above the bed to allow it to dry. All the end user would have to do is come out here to their basket sitting inside the machine, um, pop this on here after they pull this off. So pull this off, pop this on, and hang it from here like this. You can even put two little hooks right here. So two little pieces of metal coming out to hook, and then this actually, will that work? Uh, well, as a temporary measure, that works. If you raise this all the way up, you can actually hang the basket off the knob, and the basket will still sit, and it won't, it won't fall off, and the basket will still sit inside of this bucket and allow you to drip dry your parts. You just need a way of allowing this to be reversed. or design a custom bracket that doesn't stick out this way at all and that simply has a hook on here to allow you to hang the basket this way the end user can just stick it on and lift the basket up okay that might be cheap enough for you to implement that okay now the basket is also good for storage but we'll get to that later there are two modes in the printer I'm going to try to trick this into operating so you can see it so I'm going to go to wash you can go two, four, or six minutes. So let me cover the sensor on the back. And yes, it does work. You can see the magnetic stirrer begins to spin and it creates a whirlpool inside there. It's very aggressive and very effective. Um, I ran mine for a six minute cycle. I think a two minute cycle would have worked fine. I mean, I was really, really impressed with how effective that was. And halfway through, it'll stop, turn around, and it does it slowly. It doesn't do it jarringly. The motor actually comes to a stop slowly, so it's not going to rattle all your stuff. It turns around and goes the other way and builds itself up to full speed. And you get this amazing, aggressive wash inside the bucket. Very impressive. And if you take the cover off, the machine stops. Does it resume automatically? Yeah, it resumes automatically if you put the cover back on. Very, very nicely done. The um, touch panel is very sensitive. So don't push the buttons hard, just literally, just touch them. It works very well. I'm not a huge fan of these kind of button interfaces because they can sometimes be easy to damage. It's like basically a flexible membrane with the button behind. 
but these are very very sensitive and the the membrane means resin and alcohol doesn't get into buttons so that is nice easy to clean so just be gentle and you don't have to touch the buttons very hard very gentle just touch them and they work fine now once you're done rinsing your part you remove your basket you remove your other gadgets and you can seal up the bucket so that preserves your alcohol and also keeps it from spilling so you don't make a mess another handy feature is you can store these parts inside your bu your basket so I store all of these in here the extra bearing it comes with I store in here and the platform I store in here and now I can store all of that next to the printer that comes in handy the basket does have some minor issues um, the primary one these holes are too big okay this mesh needs to be one quarter what it is smaller if possible you'll have to do some internal testing to determine how much it restricts the flow of the alcohol because if you slow down the flow of the alcohol you don't get the cleaning process but they definitely need to be smaller um, fully 50 percent of the prints that I make are smaller than these holes the parts are going to fall through and get chewed up by the spinner on the bottom now you can leave the whole build plate and attach it but if something comes off that build plate it's going straight down to that motor okay so I would like to see a slightly tighter mesh on this so that this can be used for smaller parts now second mode curing okay this here is an array of LEDs at two different frequencies I'm not sure why two different frequencies I guess it's more effective at curing for a larger range of resins it's 405 nanometer and I think either 365 or 385 nanometers I think 365 for whatever reason to the eye through the case you look blue and yellow okay this is your curing platform now I added a DVD to mine I had to core out the hole in the DVD just a little bit to get it to fit my idea was to try to reflect some of the UV light off the bottom to the bottom of the model didn't work very well um, any cubic what I suggest two things that need to be done first the interface between this and this is too tight you really got to nail it right now the good thing is these screws do line up with the nubs that have to line up so end users when you install it line that access the line formed by these two screws line that up with the line formed by the two indents on the motor and it's reasonably easy to insert any cubic my suggestion to you would be to bevel these edges inside of here so that if I'm off by two or three degrees the motor will self align right now you've got to nail it if you're off one degree it's not going on but if you bevel those edges they'll catch and self align and it'll turn itself to the position it needs to and drop into place small change that'll make the user experience a lot better um, from any cubist perspective the upgrade that I would like to see to this is to add this is 40 watts worth of LEDs so add 10 more watts of LEDs you have plenty of bandwidth in your power supply to accommodate 10 more watts of power and have a ring of LEDs embedded into the aluminum right here and you have to embed them of course because otherwise the bucket won't sit flat okay so embed 10 more watts of these LEDs in a ring on the bottom here so that when this is running that light will shine through the acrylic and cure the bottom of the models when I was curing these I had them sitting on the bed like this so that they would get hit by the UV light from all angles and the cavity inside the rings did not cure it was still um, wet inside so I had to run a cycle and then I had to tilt the rings out like this to make sure that the UV light would get inside of that cavity there and then run a second cycle by the way the wash and the cure perfect some of the smoothest cleanest prints I've ever touched after a wash and cure and normally it takes me half an hour to wash my prints um, and I usually do multiple cycles of wash and then I have to cure them you don't I don't like to use sunlight because it makes it more brittle I prefer to use UV light and it's usually a half hour or so in the UV light um, this two six minute cycles and I was freaking done <laughs> I'm very pleased with how effectively it cleaned and cured these prints but if you were to add an LED ring to the aluminum plate underneath that would solve the curing problem and I would only have to run one cycle instead of two cycles so for me it took six minutes to wash six minutes to cure the first time and six minutes to cure the second time so I had to run two cycles 
with an LED ring on the bottom, I would not have to run two cycles, just one. That would only actually affect models that have cavities like this. But a lot of them are going to have little nooks and crannies where these LEDs are going to miss because it can't get underneath the platform and up. I was thinking you could add a reflective layer to the bottom of the acrylic, but I already tried that using a DVD that I cored out so it would fit, and it did not work. It probably is reflecting light, just not enough. Um, now, the curing cycle. We are going to put the cover on for this because I don't know how damaging that UV light could be to my eyes. The cover drops in place. I switch it to cure, hit play. As you can see, fan turns on. Um, I don't know if it's blowing air through this. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a fan in here actually blowing. But the plate slowly turns. I want to say it's... Sixteen, so I want to say it's four RPM roughly, right about four RPM, which is fine. And then you have that array of LEDs there that you can see in the video, and they are what is curing the model, and the cover protects you. So that's how simple it is. You put the bucket on there, you put the basket in there, and you put your parts in the basket. You run your wash cycle for two, four, or six minutes. Then you take the bucket out, close it up. Put your plate on, put your models on the plate, and run your cure cycle for two, four, or six minutes. I would run six, why not? It's, there's, no, there's no real benefit to running less unless you're absolutely sure that's going to effectively cure the models. But that's all there is to it. Very, very simple and very effective. It uses the same power supply as the Mega Zero, which means it's also using the same 12 volt, 6 amp UL listed power supply that was verified by Tim at TS3D that it is actually UL listed, which means, I believe that means that these machines can be purchased, I don't know if the power supply for this is UL listed, we'll have to confirm that, but the Mega Zero and this at least can be purchased for US classrooms because it will pass the requirements that they have for UL listing and whatnot for schools to purchase this, which is very good. Although. I don't know if younger children should be messing with resin. <laughs> uh, maybe the older teenagers, but even them. I mean, you know, imagine kids flinging toxic resin at each other. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but at least it's able to be sold to those classes, which is nice. Now, oh, one more thing I would like to see done. I will be posting to Thingiverse soon. I haven't designed it yet. I'm going to do that this weekend. But um, any cubic... You need to include two of these. Okay? You need to have at least a two bucket bath when you are washing the resin parts. Um, when you are done washing in the first bucket, each time you wash, this alcohol becomes more and more contaminated. This stuff's expensive. It's 10 or $12 a gallon. We don't just throw it away. We use it until it can't be used anymore. So you need a second bath. So the first rinse takes away all of the bulk resin. Now because this is fresh clean alcohol, it takes it all off. But as you use this more and more and more, and this becomes more and more saturated with resin in solution, it's going to be a little bit less effective at cleaning, and that's where the second bath comes in. You go from the first bath to the second bath. Now because the first bath took off 99% of the resin, you're only putting 1% of the resin in the second bath, so it lasts a lot longer, and your parts end up cleaner. Okay. Now also, you don't have to include the spinner on the second one, but I would advise including the spinner on the second one. It probably doesn't cost you that much in reality. Be sure to include two extra ball bearings. Um, but the idea is when this bath becomes too contaminated, I can take my secondary bath and make it my primary bath and put it in the printer. And by including the spinner on both baths, I don't have to change anything. I don't have to try pouring liquid in different containers. I can then dispose of the liquid in the first bath or process the liquid in the first bath to try to recover the alcohol and then make this one my new secondary bath when I fill it with fresh or reprocessed alcohol. So I would also like to see a um, um, a holder up here. I'm going to 3D print one that has the same indent that you have inside your machine here and I will mount this right here like this on top of the machine. Since it has a lid and it's going to be sitting inside of a holder, it's not likely to be knocked over and it doesn't take a larger footprint on the printer. Then I will take my basket, because remember inside the machine is going to be the other basket filled with fluid. I will take the platform and all of the extra parts the machine comes with 
and also the platform fits in here and I'll have a little hook right here basically a little edge right here so that I can take this and hang it right from here like that and now my machine is all compact and in basically storage mode you know turn it off and I'm done for the night I don't have to worry about it I was thinking you could hang this on the side or the back of the machine but that's inadvisable I would advise the front of the machine because I guarantee you what's going to happen you hang this from the side of the back one of these days you're going to walk in you're going to take this off and you're going to grab this lid and yank it off and all these parts are going to go flying everywhere <laughs> so by hanging it on the front you can't miss it you can obviously see it there and you can take it off and put it aside before removing your lid but that would be a simple 3D printed part that I'm going to make in post to allow you to put a second bucket on top and hang the basket on the front so that my machine is all now neat and put away for the night and I don't have to worry about it. Um, one other change that I would make to the machine. One of the problems is you're using a tremendous amount of alcohol in this bucket. What you want is to have let's say this is the build volume of the printer so 150, 130, 120 or 90 whatever the build volume is let's say this is the build volume of the printer right now this is designed to accept prints like this there is enough room in here and actually I believe there might be enough room in here even to allow you to have the build volume on its side like this and have the alcohol take up that volume so right now, if I want to put a full build height print in here, I have to put 3.5 liters of alcohol in here. But if I turn the build volume sideways, now I only need 2 liters of alcohol to do a full build volume rinse. That would be very advisable to do. I believe you can get that by simply making the basket a little bit bigger so that it conforms more to the inside of the, um, the bucket here so that I can fit a full build volume print on its side in the basket and if possible this way in the basket which I believe would almost fit if you reshape you might have to square off the edges of the bucket a little bit but if I could put a full build volume in the basket like that now I only need 1.5 liters of alcohol and considering the alcohol is expensive and gets contaminated that would be a very good thing I'm actually going to print a full build volume model on my FDM printer of the build volume of this printer and see whether or not it will fit inside of here. Um, it might be as simple as using a slightly bigger bucket and a slightly bigger basket. But you basically, here's your build volume of your printer. You want the bucket to hold the parts like this so that you use the minimum amount of alcohol possible because you're already using half a liter just to overcome the spinner. And it also might be worth it. You could probably shape the propeller, the spinner, a little bit differently. But it might be worth building up a cavity around the spinner to, again, create volume that does not contain alcohol, lifting the alcohol up so you don't have as much wastage. Just something to think about for revision 2 of the model because um, that uses a lot of alcohol. <laughs> that uses $10 worth of alcohol right there. That's a lot. But um, that's basically it. Overall, I am ridiculously impressed with this. I will be honest, when they said they were going to send this to me, I of course said yes, but I was a bit iffy. <laughs> I was like, a wash cure station? Really? I could build one of these for 100 bucks, you know, just with some styrofoam and a USB turntable and some LED lights and stuff like that. After using it, I'm sold. I was able to go from printer to wash, to cure with no mess. No mess on the table, no mess on me, and the whole process was significantly faster and more efficient. I'm sold. This is impressive. If you're heavy into resin printing, you're going to want one of these. Even if you already have a homemade curing station, this just works so much more efficiently and cleanly and professionally, I'm blown away. I'm really, really impressed with this. I don't know what the final price is going to be. I'm hoping they can keep it under 300 bucks. If they can keep this around 250, 275, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, keep in mind, this is all aluminum, all metal. You know, this is aluminum, that's aluminum. The vertical tower is aluminum, it's all metal. The spinner's aluminum. You know, there's nothing plastic on here except for 
the platform and the shell and the bucket. Everything else is metal. So it's a nice machine. It's going to last a long time. It's got cooling. It's got safety protection. It's got UL listed power supply. It's got a nice efficient interface. It's super simple to use. Wash cure. Start. Stop. How long do you want it to run? That's all there is. If you have any questions, ask down below. I will do my best to answer them. It's a longer video than normal, but it's an unusually nice little device, and I included feedback for any cubic in the video as well. So I'll see you guys next week.